Hello everyone, it is nice to see you again. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. Nice to meet you. Um, if you're wondering why we're wearing a hat today, it's actually because I cut my own hair, and it turns out a six is way too short. I wanted to have some nice longer hair on the top and like, you know, shorter on the side, like, you know, the, the cool style or whatever it is that, I don't know, I've had for a little bit. Turns out, yeah, six is too short, and it looks kind of bad. You probably can't see it very well on the camera, but we're gonna wear a hat today. We're gonna cover it up. This is my favorite hat. Got it in Disney World. Um, but yeah, today we're having a conversation about the Canon R6 and the features that I use the most on it. Things I'm gonna take photos and videos faster and take photos and videos of myself. I don't have a first AC. This is the camera. Um, but anyways, we're gonna start out today with the flip out screen. It's a, a cool feature. So let's roll the intro and we'll get right on into it. So first time of business, the flip out screen, it is by far the coolest thing about any camera. The T6i has it, the R6 has it. It's really awesome because it allows you to take photos from like weird angles, right? If you're you know, trying to shoot from a high angle, trying to shoot from like a low angle, maybe you're even just like off axis a little bit. It's super awesome because it allows you to get directly on with the camera and like what you're filming and without having to like, you know, look weird and stuff like that. It also is touch uh, sensitive and a touch screen. Um, so that way you can go through and you can actually like change all of your settings without having to change any of the dials because if you ever recorded with the internal microphone you know that these dials are very very loud and it kind of ruins your footage. It also allows you to do touch shutter. I've never used touch shutter before. I've never ran into a situation where I need to use it and it's also sometimes just kind of annoying. If I'm going to take a photo without having to actually hit the shutter button I'm just going to use my phone with the Canon app. Um, and that way I can go ahead and do some other cool features with it. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, overall, the flip off screen is a fantastic camera feature that helps me to just take easier photos and stuff like that, and it makes life a whole lot easier. And you have to appreciate it, because some cameras these days don't even have it. They just have like a tilty screen, and it's kind of annoying. So you have to appreciate it for those cameras that don't have it, if you ever run into it. Alright, so this is a feature that I didn't know that I would love actually until I got the Canon R6. It's the electronic viewfinder. So for the viewfinder on the T6i, and it's a DSLR, so it has a mirror that will drop down, right? So the mirror drops down, and if you're looking through it to see the, the photo, then when you take a photo, the mirror goes up, the photo is taken, the mirror goes back down. This, of course, is a mirrorless camera, so there is no mirror, which means whatever you see in this viewfinder is actually whatever you would see on a DSLR with live preview mode. So you see not only the image preview, but also all of your settings. Right, the T6i will show me like the shutter speed, the ISO, and the aperture, like the main three. This one will show me the histogram, where I'm taking photos to, uh, my SD card, what format I'm in, uh, what shooting speed I'm in, my white balance and everything. You can see all that stuff in the viewfinder because it's just one giant screen. And by giant, I mean like huge. Compared to the T6i, this thing is like having like a 65 inch TV like right next to your eyeball. It's super awesome. But I can see all of my settings catalog and everything like that all in the viewfinder because it's basically just taking the screen from the LCD and just putting it up here. So it's very awesome. Now I did use a Canon 5D which is a full frame camera a couple years ago and I believe that also had a big screen because it was a full frame camera. Um, but I can only go off of the T6i because that's what I know and what I use. So compared to that, it's huge. But yeah, definitely my fav one of my favorite things. I use this all the time. And also one of the cool things about the electronic viewfinder is if you've ever taken photos outside, you'll know that like, like the sunlight will actually make things appear brighter or darker. It usually it's darker. Right? So you take a photo, you go, oh man, it's kind of dark. Yeah, I need to brighten it. But then you get back and the photo that was dark was actually the good looking one. What you can actually do is bring your camera to your eye and you can actually look at the photos in the electronic viewfinder and see the true colors. And it's actually super nice Probably one of the best features about the viewfinder is that you can actually review your footage in the field and get true colors because all you see is the actual image, no sun, nothing to distort it. It's absolutely amazing and 
one of the top reasons for why it's like close to the top. Okay, so one more bonus thing for the viewfinder also is that since, again, it's using the screen and not the actual mirror, you can look at the video as you're filming it through the viewfinder. You can't do this on a T6 side because of course that needs to use the mirror and everything, but because this uses the screen, you can take videos and get extra stabilization points and all that good stuff when you're taking video too, as well as photos. So that's another like bonus thing and all that stuff. So let's go on to the next uh, feature. Alright, so this feature I actually did talk about in my first impressions back in March is that everything has a button, right? I've got a button for the shutter speed, the ISO, and the aperture, so I can go through and change all of those with just like, you know, muscle memory. The T6i, I have a dial for the shutter speed, and I can toggle it for the ISO and use that same dial. But this one has three separate dials for all three separate settings. It's even got settings, I have this for like peaking uh, down here. In the back, I've got things for like manual focus and other stuff. It's got tons of different buttons that you can customize. You don't realize how good it is until you can actually go through and just change like 18 things at once without having to even like move the camera away from your face. It's super awesome. So definitely one of the top things and why I love having all these buttons on the Canon R6. And yeah, let's move on to the next one. All right, so next up we have peaking and the focus guide. Peaking is something I used on a Canon C100 a couple years ago, and I've always wanted it since. Basically, whenever something's in focus, it'll give you a red outline around the object. And so it's very good for if you're using manual focus and you're like, is it in focus? I don't know, sometimes you're, I can play like tricks on you and you think it's in focus, but really it's not. Um, so the peaking is kind of like a mechanical, like like software thing that I actually tell you, it's in focus, don't worry, I got you. And then along these lines is the focus guide square. It basically does the same thing, except instead of for like an entire plane, it does it for just like a single point, right? So it'll be like this point's in focus, this point's in focus. Um, I've got a couple videos on the channel about this. If you wanna learn more, it's super awesome and really is helpful whenever you're doing manual focus, because sometimes our focus will go to the wrong thing and stuff like that, but yeah, manual focus, Peaking and the Focus Guide Square are absolutely two amazing things. And if you want to learn more, again, you can go check out any of the other videos on the channel. I got like I got like two or three of them on those. And yeah, let's go on to the next one. And so probably the most used feature on my Canon R6 is actually the rate button. Um, when you hit it, it takes you to below the like the, the YouTube video where the like button is, no matter where you are in the world. And you can choose to either like it or dislike it. I'm not going to force any opinions. And then whenever you're done, it takes you back right to wherever you were in the world, and you can continue on with your day with whatever you were doing. Thank you. Alright, so one of the most time-consuming things whenever you're taking photos and videos or doing like, you know, let's say behind the scenes or even just like main scenes, I guess, um, is switching from photo to video mode, right? You get photo on this side and video mode on the complete other side of the dial. It goes, it takes a long time to go through and like, you know, twist the dial and make sure that you're, you're hitting it. And then of course if you miss, you gotta really turn it again. So if you're in a photo mode on this camera, you can actually go through and just hit the video mode and it'll take you there and you can actually just start taking videos instantly. It's super awesome, saves you a ton of time. Now you can only film between uh, 24 and 60 FPS, there's no 120. But if you're there taking photos and you wanna capture a quick moment with a, co a couple friends or like, you know, the coworkers or something like that, you can take a couple of photos, hit the, v hit the yeah, record button, straight to video and all that good stuff. And then whenever you're done, you hit it again and it'll stop it. You're back in photo mode, you waste no time. Super awesome, super efficient, I like it. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, taking photos and videos of myself whenever I'm like, you know, doing behind the scenes or like trying to do like a thing from like Instagram or like the thumbnail or something like that, it's actually really hard for me to be in the picture as well as like, you know, a, the camera and everything. Cause I have to be the one to take the picture and be in the picture. And of course this camera does have an internal timer feature so I can like, you know, set it up, take a photo and then walk back and check it. But the problem is once I leave the camera, I can't like make sure that things are in focus and make sure that, you know, things are gonna be framed properly. So I use the camera connect app for the, my iPhone and I can go through and set up my camera, connect to it via the Wi-Fi in the camera and then I can remotely trigger the shutter and I can go through and move the autofocus. I can actually change all the settings. I can get a live preview. I can see the photos that are on the camera. Basically, it's like taking your camera with you for like a little bit away and you can uh, see what you're taking a picture of you know, when you're not at the camera. So it's very useful for if you're kind of like a small group, you know, we have like a one man band like I am. And yeah, I don't use it too often, but I do use it and it does, it is a lifesaver, so I like it. 
All right, so with this feature, I'm gonna be honest, I don't use it all that often, at least in the practical sense. I'm not out taking photos of like fast cars or sports or like anything else fast, um, but I do use it as a party trick. Right, so if I'm out taking photos or videos and stuff like that, I go and I go, hey man, look at this cool feature that I can do with this camera. I'll whip it out and I'll just be like. And then usually they're like, whoa, that's crazy. And maybe you're thinking, that's not that crazy. My iPhone can take like, you know, 30 frames per second already or like 20 frames. And it's like, I can just hold down the button and I can already do it. But I don't know, there's something cool about just hearing the shutter button just like fire really, really fast. And even if you go into like full mechanical mode, uh, let's see, full mechanical mode. It's even faster. And yeah, it's just like, it's really, really cool. Um, and I don't know, I, I like doing it as a party trick. I think it's really fun. I think it's really fun to show people. And sometimes they get a kick out of it. So it's really cool. So yeah, that's my favorite feature for like party tricks. Again, don't ever use it very practically, but it's very fun. And it makes me smile. Like, look, look, look how happy I am. I'm just taking photos, like of nothing. But you know, it's, it's so fun. All right, and so for the last two features today, we have 120 FPS. One, because it looks awesome in my opinion. I think it is super unique. Uh, basically, if you don't know what it is, you're coming at 120 FPS, and when you brought down to 24 FPS, it's five times slower than what your eye can see. So it gives you a really unique perspective. It just makes things look really smooth and slow and just different is what it is. And I, that's what I like about it. It's just like, it's a different perspective and it's really nice. And then second, this is a full frame camera. When I film on the T6i, everything is essentially cropped, right? Everything is essentially like zoomed in a little bit. Um, but when I have the Canon R6, everything is supposed to be a little bit wider. Now, I don't actually take advantage of this because I have a, I only have a 24 millimeter lens. The Canon T6i is an 18 millimeter lens. They're basically the equivalent whenever you do the math. Um, however, this has the ability for me to expand. If I go down to an 18 millimeter on here, it'll be way wider than on the T6i. So I haven't really taken advantage of that feature yet because I don't have the money for it. However, when I do get like an 18 or 15 millimeter lens, it'll be super wide and I'll be able to actually take advantage of the full frame mode and it'll be awesome. But until then, it's basically the same thing. So there's not really an upgrade, but the expansion feature and the expansion possibilities are there. And that's it. I think I'm gonna need a giant drink of water after all of this. The Canon R6 has been a great camera for me over the past nine months. Um, absolutely, I love it. Every time I use it, I just I just smile. Just because it has everything I've ever wanted, everything that I didn't know I need. And it just, it's like probably gonna be my only camera I buy for the next couple years, unless I need like a backup camera or something like that. But that won't be super expensive. But this will be the main camera that I, the only camera I buy for the next couple years. Just because it has absolutely everything that I need. So if there's anything you think I missed in the comment section down below, any features that you have the Canon R6 for and you think, hey, this one's really good, you should have mentioned this one. It's something that, you know, maybe I don't even use, so let me know. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, um, and hopefully you enjoy the little like button segment. I want to make more of those because I like puns and jokes and everything like that. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day, and if you want to learn more about videography and cinematography and the Canon R6, I got a whole playlist full of like 17 videos you can go through and actually learn probably quite a bit about this camera. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Take care.